SpaceX has made a last minute update to Starship that could change everything. The company has decided to use hot staging for its next test flight in hopes that the performance gains will help it finally achieve orbit. Will this new approach propel the Starship to new heights, or is it a panic decision that will backfire? Let's talk about serial and parallel staging, how they are different from hot staging, and what benefits this unique approach will have for Starship. Please support our channel by subscribing, liking, and leave a comment. Ever since Elon Musk announced that the Starship will incorporate hot staging, anticipation has been growing among rocket enthusiasts. People are eagerly awaiting the opportunity to see this new technology in action, particularly when the pivotal moment arrives for testing it. Usually, a rocket consists of different sections known as stages. These stages are like layers stacked on one another. Within these stages, you'll primarily find the fuel used by the rocket, which is called propellant. The rocket burns this propellant to generate thrust and journey into space. This propellant also makes up the majority of the rocket's overall weight. When a rocket goes through staging, a section of the vehicle that is now no longer needed is detached from the main part of the the rocket. This process is called serial staging. In this scenario, what we observe is essentially one or more smaller rockets positioned atop a larger one. This larger section is often referred to as the booster stage or the first stage. Familiar examples of rockets that use this staging method include Falcon 9, Delta IV, Saturn, Electron, and Starship, among others. In parallel staging, we observe multiple first stage boosters attached around a central sustainer rocket. As the propellants in these side boosters are used up, they are jettisoned. Meanwhile, the central sustainer first stage rocket continues to burn its propellants and propel the second stage forward. This continues until the appropriate time for both stages to separate from each other. This arrangement is evident in rockets like the Delta IV Heavy, Ariane 5, Soyuz, Falcon Heavy, SLS, Atlas V, and the Space Shuttle, among others. Hot staging operates in a slightly different manner compared to serial and parallel staging, and it hasn't been as widely used in commercial rockets. In the usual serial stage separation process, when the first stage exhausts its propellant or nearly runs out, its engines shut down. Following this, the separation mechanism acts Activates, causing the two stages to detach. This separation occurs when the halves are slightly apart, which typically takes a few seconds. After this separation, the engines of the second stage are ignited, and it continues its journey into orbit. However, in the context of hot staging, the staging process is comparable, but with a crucial distinction. In this scenario, the second stage doesn't wait for significant separation from the first stage before igniting its engines. Instead, it ignites its engines while still physically connected to and propelled by the first stage. A notable illustration of this approach was seen in the Titan II rocket, which was initially designed as a ballistic missile and later used for launching the Gemini missions. The direct outcome of igniting the second stage while still attached to the first stage is the potential for a rapid buildup of gases that could lead to the destruction of the entire rocket in an instant. This is why we often observe openings cut into a ring that separates the two stages. These openings serve as exhaust vents to mitigate the gas buildup. The Titan II rocket had four prominent horizontal rectangular openings, each of which was further divided into four vertical rectangles. Despite these measures, the Titan rocket would still significantly damage or potentially destroy its interstage ring due to the intense forces and gases involved in the hot staging process. Soyuz rockets also employ hot staging to separate their stages, but unlike the Titan rockets, this process involves less violent forces during the separation. The interstage rings of Soyuz rockets have a distinct lattice-like pattern that resembles a crisscross arrangement. In the case of Starship, it will also utilize its own hot staging ring. It's crucial for this ring to remain intact during staging if rapid reusability is to be achieved. While the design of this ring will develop and refine over time, the initial design observed bears similarities to the ring design of the Titan II rocket. In the context of Starship, the staging ring features more cutout sections compared to Titan II. This difference is due to the distinct purposes of the rockets. Titan II was a ballistic missile, while Starship serves as a large deep space transport. Experts estimate that Starship's staging ring includes six horizontal section, each with numerous vertical rectangles cut out. These sections are divided in the middle by a beam. Currently, the staging ring is undergoing testing at different masses, and there's substantial excitement to witness how well the current design aligns with SpaceX's expectations and how it could potentially evolve over time. The reason behind SpaceX's choice of this design could be attributed to performance improvements. Elon Musk has indicated that this design could result in an increase of up to 10% in payload mass. This significant boost in capacity translates to a substantial amount of extra weight that Starship would be able to transport into space. The precise source of this performance gain remains uncertain. One of the most plausible explanations came from rocket engineer Tom Muller. In a tweet, he mentioned that hot staging could maintain a positive acceleration on the entire vehicle during staging. This would prevent the forward movement of propellant within the tanks, a phenomenon known as sloshing, which could potentially lead to the collapse of the ullage, the space above the liquid propellant. The ullage space is not actually empty. It's filled with pressurized gas, often helium or another 
another suitable propellant. This space needs to be maintained to prevent issues like propellant collapse. To repressurize this space, a method called autogenous pressurization is used. This involves taking liquid propellant, passing it through a heat exchanger to convert it into gas, and then introducing the gas back into the upper areas of the tank. In the case of a large rocket like Super Heavy, the autogenous pressurization process could indeed become highly inefficient. Since Super Heavy's tanks will be mostly empty of liquid propellant by the time staging happens, repressurizing using this method would require a significant amount of gas. Given the substantial size of Super Heavy's tanks, the requirement for a large volume of gas could potentially pose challenges in terms of efficiency and practicality. Additionally, hot staging will also remove the period during which Starship would be without acceleration. With hot staging, Starship would experience continuous thrust, leading to a different timeline compared to the initial expectations for the first orbital test flight. In the previous plan, Starship would have been without thrust for around 8 seconds following stage separation. The implementation of hot staging changes this dynamic by keeping the thrust active during the transition, potentially altering the sequence of events during the flight. Apart from the alteration in stage separation, Elon Musk has indicated that SpaceX has implemented a tremendous number of other modifications to the Starship vehicle, numbering well over a thousand. Although he didn't provide specific details about these changes, he mentioned that the company is actively working on enhancing the launch pad. This is to prevent the kind of damage incurred during the first Starship launch on April 20th. One of the upgrades involves a steel sandwich water deluge system, which has been recently installed to the launch mount. Elon Musk mentioned that they're aiming for an extensive reinforcement of both the steel sandwich and concrete components to ensure the base of the pad remains in much better condition compared to the previous instance. SpaceX has also introduced enhancements to the Raptor engines. Elon Musk mentioned that the vehicle launched in April utilized a mix of engines constructed at different times, describing it as a hodgepodge. The new Starship vehicles feature Raptors with improvements, including modifications to the hot gas manifold within the engine. These changes aim to decrease the leakage of fuel within the engine system. Musk expressed increased confidence in the success of the upcoming launch due to these modifications. He mentioned that he believes the probability of the next flight reaching orbit is much higher than the previous one, suggesting a possibility of around 60% success. Earlier, in a conversation in late April, he had estimated the chance of success on the next launch to be better than 50%. These changes and improvements have bolstered his optimism about the upcoming launch's outcome. As the world awaits the Starship's second test, many wonder if SpaceX has done enough to ensure that this new hot staging method will help it finally reach orbit. What do you think? Is the Starship ready to make history, or does it still need more time? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.